everyone, it's Kim, um, here for my very first uh, book review. I'm going to be talking about a uh, series that's actually very close to my heart. I'm going to be doing the Divergent series. Uh, I'm go I read all of them before deciding to do this book review, so I'm going to do the first two, Elite, or sorry, Divergent and Insurgent in this one, and then for the sake of not having you watch a 500 year video, I'm going to do Allegiant in the next video, and then I'm going to finish off with Four, which was actually the first time I read that book of the series. So, um, let's start with Divergent, written by Veronica Roth. In the future, the world is divided up into five different factions. We have um, Candor, which the people value honesty. Dauntless, which is people who are courageous. Amity, they value peace. Erudite, they value intelligence. Um, and Abnegation, they value selflessness. Based on a test that everybody has to take when they're 16, um, they put, it's like taking a personality test basically. They, they suggest which faction you should join and then you get to choose it for yourself, but usually people join the faction they would fit in best. Most people fit into one, which obviously is impossible these days. Uh, we find out later why that's possible. They're only supposed to sort of pretty much fit into one faction. So they're supposed to act a very certain way and everything they do strives from this one characteristic. Um, but we see this girl who when she takes the test she has she has um, she, she's kind of going in three different directions her her test results show that she can fit into dauntless or erudite or abnegation so she has um, parts of herself that are both all selfless intelligent and courageous um, but they very quickly warn her you cannot tell anybody about these test results um it's something called divergence which nobody like they want you to fit into one faction alone do not tell anybody about this or you are in serious danger um so they delete her test results put her in as if she would just chose like she just went towards abnegation but she actually ends up um at the choosing ceremony choosing to go to dauntless she never felt like she fit in at abnegation she just did not think she was selfless enough she goes to dauntless and she she very quickly becomes one of the most um, unreal initiates that they've ever seen. Like she uh, is the first to jump off like <laughs> um, a skyscraper building into this hole, um, which was part of the test. Like you have to do this or you don't make it into Dauntless. And she just had to sort of trust that obviously they're not gonna send them jumping off a building onto a cement floor um, for them to die and meet their end. She didn't do so good in like the fighting and uh, knife throwing kind of uh, tasks that they had to learn. Um, she she eventually learned to fight pretty well, but they moved then they moved on to what they call these fear simulations, and it's where um, they inject them with a fluid that sort of uh, affects the brain and makes it release fear chemicals. So they had to learn to conquer their fears, not necessarily get rid of their fears, because it addresses the fact that not having fears isn't bravery. Bravery is continuing to go in the face of what is scary to you. Since she's divergent, she can tell that she's in a simulation and therefore override it. She can just make a gun appear out of nowhere and like shoot the whatever the thing is that's um, attacking her. That's not normal. This character four, who's amazing, he uh, he tells her, you're clearly divergent. You need to pretend that you're completely with this, so stop. That's basically what the book is about, is this girl learning to go from a place that's almost like, you could compare it to like, uh, very religious, to a place that's very free. The reason that I personally was affected by this enough to get a tattoo is because in my life, I grew up Christian, I still am Christian, I'm a Jesus freak, but sometimes I feel like um, Christian women are looked at like they're supposed to be like gentle and just really quiet. They always have a supernatural amount of grace for anybody that kind of comes against them in any way, can't have opinions for themselves or they can't process things the right way. And um, that's not me at all, okay? Like I say what's on my mind. I've learned to have wisdom in that, but I still have opinions. I like to be bold about my life. I like to chase my dreams. I like tattoos. I like piercings. I I just, like, I don't fit into what I see, like this box that I see around what Christian women should be. And it's taken me years for God to actually get in my head that that's not how you have to be. I made you to be bold. I made you to be dauntless. I made you to be who you are. Not that I see those other attributes as bad. It's just that I need to, I needed to come to terms in myself about the fact that it was okay that I didn't fit 
into the box that I saw the, like as what a good Christian girl was. With this book, he showed me it's okay to be dauntless. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to be true to yourself. It's okay to like tattoos. As long as you're not doing things just out of the spirit of rebellion, be yourself. This book really taught me that I want to be that way. I want to be the girl who is unafraid to chase down um, my dreams. And I want to be the girl who, when I see something I'm scared to do, I just, I do it just to, just to take on that fear. Just showing me that it was okay to be a strong Christian female. That's totally okay. I can see why people don't like the books. There's certain parts where you really have to suspend your belief and just like, okay, well, chalk it up to it being in the future. I really like this series because I legitimately did enjoy it, but I also found a lot of freedom reading them. That's why I really am just, I love, I love this series and I could read it over and over and still find reasons to love it because I see myself a lot in um, what the main character is going through. Let's let that take us into my thoughts about the characters. Triss, um, she's a hard character to like at some points, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, she can be super annoying. Like at first she wasn't so bad, um, but once her relationship starts to develop with this other main character named Four, um, and her feelings start to develop, she starts expecting a lot of things from him, and she sort of becomes just, to me, one of those annoying girls who doesn't know how to be in a relationship and makes it all about her. There's moments when Four is clearly just doing what he has to do to protect her because he knows she is divergent. She just doesn't, she can't get that through her head. He can't treat her like his girlfriend because otherwise the other initiates will assume that she's getting her good marks just because he loves her. And it's really stupid because she's seen the effects of that. She, like there's one point where the other initiates try to kill her. Obviously Four can't tell people that you're in a relationship because then they'll really try to kill you because they'll assume that you're only getting these good marks because he's in love with you. She volunteers to get knives thrown at her instead of them being thrown at Al. Four purposely nicks her in the ear and she is pissed, like so mad. He had to make it look real, like he had to really look like he was scaring you, um, but she really like holds that against him until he explains himself. And so that's sort of, um, in this book, what I find about Triss is that sometimes, like, even though, yes, she's brave, she's real, she has struggles, but it's just, like, sometimes it's hard to read, sometimes it's hard to identify with her because you're just like, oh, like, you can clearly see through her train of thought, and you're just like, I wish you would get this, because Four has told you 500 times already. And so, my thoughts on Four, then. Obviously, I love Four. Everybody loves Four. It's like, everybody needs more Four in their life. <laughs> In this book, he's so just like mysterious, like just enough to be like intriguing. Obviously, he went through abuse with his family. Um, his dad was really abusive and then his mom um, left him um, when he was still a kid. And then he was just left by himself to be abused by his dad. Finding all that stuff out, you sort of respect him more. I don't know why, but the moment when they're climbing up the Ferris wheel and he says, are you human, Triss? Like for some reason it's like that. That is cool. I don't know why that moment stands out to me, but it does. Just like the way he says things, it's perfect. So once he gets into his relationship with Triss, it sort of almost heightens your respect for him more because it's like he always has the right answer for everything. He's very calculated. He thinks about things before he does them, which is the exact opposite of Triss. She kind of just does things off the fly, off the cuff. Um, stepping in and stepping up where maybe she shouldn't or like there's moments where she just does things without thinking. He thinks about it first. He's smart. He's giving her advice, guiding her through initiation. And it's just like, that's why I think people like Four, including myself, I like him because he's just the strong silent type. He's intriguing, mysterious. I love that moment when they went through Lauren's fear landscape at that one point. Um, and everyone was like, oh, I figured we would go through fours because he's our instructor. And then somebody was like, oh yeah, like he would like let anyone see his four landscape. And then Tris is just like, he, she feels so special because like, oh, like he let me see it. He let me see it. And that's why like it's so special because he doesn't let people in very often. Um, but he let her in. And so she knows all the parts about him that are a mystery to everybody else. And that's what, what I think is so special about him. He's not really the, the type where you can say, um, oh, what you see is what you get, um, which is like, on one hand, that's a good thing to have. But on the other hand, like he is, he has appeal because he's not like what you see, what 
isn't what you get with four. He's very different when he's with Triss. I think I've said all I needed to say about Divergent. I mean, obviously, like, once you read it, there's parts in the end, like, the whole them going through the simulation uh, and going to kill all the abnegation. That's a huge moment. Um, read on, folks. Um, so let's move on to Insurgent. This book actually weighed me down a lot. Like, I, I remember when I read it for the first time, I was... I felt depressed for about a couple weeks afterward. I just had that lingering feeling of sadness. This book rose the emotion out of me, which is what I look for in a book. This book is um, sort of about the repercussions after the Dauntless are under the simulation and they attack all the abnegation. This is after they wake up. Half of them are like completely pissed, obviously for good reason, that the erudite took control of their minds and so they've all of a sudden have it on their conscience that they murdered tons of people without even knowing it without it being their choice that half of the dauntless they become like refugees they're on the run and then the other half become uh they're called dauntless rebels in the book they join the erudite for some reason i have no idea why i guess they just desire the power that the erudite are offering i think a big group of them go to candor right away and then tris and her group end up, go up going to amity um, so one good thing about this book is we get to see a perspective into the two factions that aren't a major player in the storyline of the book aside from this. Um, so that would be Candor and Amity. First we go to Amity and you see it clashing because I would say that obviously Amity and Dauntless are literally two opposing forces because Amity was formed for people who uh, blame violence. They blame aggression for uh, for for all the world's problems. So they value peace, whereas um, Dauntless, they value aggression. They value people taking on their fears and taking on, like, standing up for themselves. They value that. They have to sort of end up relying on each other, and I think people in both factions end up growing from it. Like, you see the leader of the Amity in book three, she really changes. And then the rest of them, like, Triss, at one point is really like, I, I, she found herself missing Amity because of its peacefulness. So, so you start to see it come together where um, people in, in one faction will start to find out that the values in other factions aren't, actually aren't that bad. The Amity decide to back out. They don't want to give the Dauntless san or, or the Abnegation sanction anymore because they don't want to be involved in the war. They don't want to encourage this violence. They want to step back as a way to kind of encourage peace. So they end up running to Candor, where I think the rest of the Divergent, um, the Divergent people on the run are staying already. So at this point, it's really important in the story. Candor is the value of honesty. They've, uh, they see dishonesty as the source of all problems. So uh, in order to have sanction with them, um, Triss and Tobias are required to go under a truth serum and basically reveal all their secrets. Triss, who has been struggling with the fact that she killed Will in the Divergent book, she can't even lift up a gun currently because she's just like having post-traumatic stress disorder from killing one of her best friends. That is a um, repercussion of Erudite putting all these people under and making them kill people without even them knowing about it because Triss, her, one of her best friends was coming at her trying to kill her and she had no choice but to kill him. And she'll, so now she like, she can't even look at a gun without like literally freaking out. She can't pick one out, up, she can't aim, she can't shoot, like if even if she had to, like it's, um, and Tobias is wondering why and she won't tell him. And so this is the part where everybody, including Christina, who was dating Will, finds out that she killed Will. What we find out from Tobias, everybody finds out that in a way, he was a coward because he left abnegation in order to escape his abusive father. And in that way, people start sort of seeing him as more of a coward than somebody brave because he didn't join Dauntless because he was Dauntless. He joined Dauntless because he was running away from something, which sort of is the opposite of what they're looking for. We also have the factionless coming into this. Uh, the factionless are people who, if they didn't fit in, you have a bunch of divergent in the factionless because if they didn't fit into a certain faction, they ended up as factionless. Or if they failed any faction initiation, they end up as factionless. So you have this group of people coming into play as well. And they their plans are to make war on the erudite. And we find out in this book that Tobias's mother, who he thought was dead, is actually still alive. 
he knew about it though. So everybody else finds that out, but he already knew that his mom is still alive and they end up connecting and she wants them to join the war that they, that the factionalists are planning to set on the Erudite. The factionalists want the factions completely destroyed. We have all this coming into play all these different things. And these are my, my personal thoughts on this book. It's sort of like this the whole time. And there's nothing really that stands out to me as a climax. And, but the thing is, I can't, like, I couldn't, when I'm explaining this book to people and like, I'm like, I really like it, but I can't figure out why. And I figured out why the other day, actually. It's because this book is like the character development of the entire series. This book is important to me because I really like character development. I really I really like the moments where nothing really huge is going on. You're just getting a view into who the characters are and you're seeing them sort of descend or ascend into different characteristics, um, just becoming different people, struggling with different things. I like that stuff. It's the same with the Mockingjay book and the movie. I know a lot of people are like, man, Mockingjay, the third movie was so super boring. Like I hated it, nothing happened. Happen. And I'm like, I love it. It's because I don't care if there's no action going on as long as I am getting all this character development, like all this emotional, like this struggling stuff, I like it. And that's why it left, it, it affected me. It left me feeling really heavy um, because I don't care if there's no action going on as well, as long as I'm emotionally connecting to the characters and what they're going through, that's all that matters to me. As long as like, obviously something happens at some point, but but in the series, this book is definitely the character development. This book, it's important. You can't skip over it. I'm not going to say nothing happened. Like, obviously important things happened, but this is just the development of the two factions that we don't get anything to do with in other books. You see what Triss is really struggling with, what Tobias is really struggling with. You get to see, like, why the Erudite are doing what they're doing. Marcus's character development. Joanna, the leader of the Amity, she, like, you get her character development. There's so many important character development notes in this that I... I don't know why people see character development as boring. I love it. Like, I love it when you see a character go from here to here or vice versa. I just find that so intriguing and so important. Um, but I know like lots of people, it's like they really gave up on this book. Like I know my auntie is the one that recommended these books to me. She loved Divergence. She recommended it to me. But once she got into Insurgent, she was just like, I can't even, like I had to just stop reading because it was so boring. But for me, it's like the complete opposite. Like I'm intrigued by what people are going through. I'm glad that I can finally like vocalize why I like it. I want to briefly talk about my views on Tristan Tobias's relationship in this book. It's awful. <laughs> I like, you want so bad for them to be a great couple. It's like you just want their relationship to be working, but it's just not. And it's frustrating because as a reader, you can see why it's not working. They're just not being honest with each other. And uh, Tris, it's just like one lie after the another to Tobias, even though he keeps telling her like, you just need to be honest with me. Like for some reason she had in her head that Four would think less of her if, if, she, if he knew that she killed Will, which doesn't make any sense to me and it didn't make any sense to him. Obviously Tobias has done stuff in his life that's bad as well. Um, so why was she so afraid? And it's just like one thing like that after another with Tris in this book that uh, is what makes her character frustrating. You're like, why do you keep lying to Four? Why don't you just be honest with him? Just tell him how you feel. It's like one of those things where you're just like, that's that's what's frustrating in shows and books sometimes and movies is just like, this whole thing would be cleared up and fixed. This whole problem would be fixed if you would just have this one important conversation. Tobias like isn't, isn't completely innocent in this either. It's like, I know a lot of people want to hate on Tris for this because she's like, let's be honest, you're, you're seeing it from her perspective. So it's so easy to hate her because you're getting her thoughts, but her thoughts don't make sense. So it's easy to hate her and still love Tobias. But in all honesty, Tobias does the exact same thing. He doesn't tell Triss half of his plans, half of his thoughts, the reason he wants to get together with the factionless, his thoughts on his mom. He keeps her out of all that stuff. And so he's not innocent in this either. You see them struggling in the relationship just because they keep hiding things from each other. Right up until the end, when Triss, she decides to go to a Rudite headquarters to turn herself in so that nobody else will die. Um, and Tobias says, no, please just do this one thing and don't go. And she's like, yeah, I won't go. But she knows even when she says that, that she's lying and she ends up going. The whole time Tobias has been sort of like, it seems like you have a death wish. Like you just, you just keep doing things that are reckless without thinking. You're just an adrenaline dauntless junkie. Like he sort of says to her. The thing is that Triss 
is struggling through the whole series to find the balance between being selfless and being brave. And that's a big theme in the book is like, where does that balance lie? And those are the two factions she's been involved in. She's been struggling, trying to find her place in both, trying to find the, the middle ground in it, trying to find the perfect balance of these characteristics. And she just cannot find them in this book. And that's the problem that Triss is having. And so when she's in Aruda headquarters, she it's like she has an epiphany that she wants to live. She doesn't want to die. She all of a sudden gets her life motivation back and she decides that, you know, she needs to, her and Four need to start treasuring their relationship. She doesn't want it to end. She doesn't want to die. She wants to live. And so that's when everything turns around and that's kind of at the end of the book. And so Allegiant is a different story, which we'll get into with the next review. Uh, so tune in for that. Um, but yeah, so those are my thoughts on Divergent and Insurgent. I think I've highlighted everything I want to say. I want to hear you guys' thoughts too if you've read the books. Um, I know a lot of my friends have. Let's talk it out. These, This is what I like doing about books. I don't just want to give a review like, oh, I give this five stars. Yeah, like you'll really want to read this book. Like I want, when I do my reviews, I want to give my thoughts and I want to like try and look, try and tell you my perspective on things. So I give Divergent, I have to give it like nine out of 10 stars because I, I'm sorry, I love these books. I just do, I can see why you might rate it lower, but nine out of 10 is gonna be for me. And Insurgent, I'm actually gonna give it the same. Now that I know why I like Insurgent, I'm going to give it, I'll give it eight out of 10. Eight out of 10 stars. I still highly recommend this book, um, especially if you're okay with character development, um, or even if you can, even if you're not usually okay with books that aren't full of action, like if you can go into this knowing that it's character development and look at it from that perspective, maybe it'll help you read it. I want to hear your comments. Give me a shout out, comment under the post below. I'll join in the discussion as much as I can. Um, tune in next time for my review of Allegiant, and then I'm also going to review, uh, release a review of Four. Uh, so tune in for those. Thanks for listening. Um, yeah, have a good day.